I believe I showed the uh, utmost courage on January 6th. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. Did y'all hear that? This video is brought to you by Extreme Tees. Click on the link below. Make sure you put Kevin in the promo code and you'll get a 20% discount. What if I told you you could get your hands on some gold from one of the if not the most important shipwreck in our history. It serves as a snapshot of America's most historical era, California Gold Rush. It is the biggest contributor to the Panic of 1857. And no, it's not the Titanic. It's the SS Central America. And now you can own coins recovered from it. Each coin has a unique recovery number and comes in a quality display box with a certificate of authenticity. Go to www.noblegoldinvestments.com to get yours now. Protect your retirement with a Noble Gold IRA. Till today, we couldn't say, we could not confirm who shot Ashley Babbitt to death in the Capitol building on January 6th? Now we know the officer's name, not because the authorities released it, but because he felt like revealing it himself. The officer's name is Michael Byrd, because it's the same Michael Byrd, the Capitol Police officer, who left his loaded Glock 22, loaded with no safety, in the men's room in the Capitol building in 2019. Now, if you handle firearms for a living in a police department or in the military, you know there's no greater sin than that, to leave it in a men's room. No, oh, lighten up, son. If he was gonna commit a crime, would he have invited the number one cop in town? Now, where did I put my gun? Oh, yeah, I set it down when I got a piece of cake and not report it, but he wasn't punished. Bird reportedly told his fellow officers at the time that he would not be punished, he was right. He said he'd be, quote, treated differently because of his rank, he was lieutenant. We see your arm out there for a considerable amount of time. Were you wavering? I was taking a tactical stance. You're ultimately hoping that your commands will be complied with, and unfortunately they were not. When you fired, what could you see? Where were you aiming? You're taught to aim for center mass. Uh, the subject was sideways, and I could not see her full motion of her hands or anything. Um, so I guess her movement, you know, caused the uh, discharge to, to fall where it did. And what did you think this individual was doing at that, at that moment? She was posing a threat to United States House of Representatives. Oh, she was posing a threat. Well, let's see, she was 5'2", she was unarmed, there were armed police and tactical gear standing right next to her on the other side of the door, and of course within the chamber where Michael Byrd was. She was not warned, the tape shows that, she was just executed, but she was a threat. That's what he's telling you. Now you'd think the fact, again, Ashley Babbitt was a female who was 5'2", weighed 125 pounds soaking wet and had no weapon, might have suggested that she wasn't a threat. But according to Michael Byrd, no, never occurred to him. Her family points out that she was not armed. That's correct. The fact that you weren't aware whether she was armed or not, did that alter the decision making? It did not. Yeah, it didn't alter it at all. So she was an unarmed protester. I don't think we execute unarmed protesters, do we? Well, we just did. No one's apologized for it. He's a hero. In any other circumstances, imagine how the American media, which does seem to be the main moral arbiter in this country at this point, how would they treat an officer like this? Not well. Officers are trained. Please keep that in mind. They can't have the same mindset that a normal citizen has or can say they're trained. You're trained for people that may do things that you that are unexpected. He could have been drugged down to the ground. There was multiple police officers there. Complainant says Jacob Blake isn't supposed to be there and he took the complainant's keys and refused, is refusing to get them back. So I decided not to give her the keys. It was in her name. Why would the first instinct of any officer be to draw a weapon next to three children, less than a foot from three, three children, right that he was supposed to be saving, he could have shot and hurt himself. On the way to the scene, officers are told there's a warrant for Blake on domestic violence offenses and sexual assault. We have an alert at this address for 99 for that subject. That can't be the way they train him at the, at the academy, is it? So he snatched the t-shirt of the young man and shot him seven times in the back. Records show that Officer Shesky recalls telling Blake, quote, Let's talk about this. Um, what would you have liked to see him taken down if they thought there was something he needed to go in front of a court? Police deploy a stun gun multiple times. Blake pulls the prongs out of his skin. Officer Shesky and Blake 
end up in a physical altercation on the ground. We see you, you walk away from the officers after they try to grab you. At that point, I'm rattled, you know. I realized I had dropped my knife, I had a little pocket knife. Adjudicate, that's the proper way the police should be police. So I picked it up after I got off of him because they tased me and I fell on top of him. I think, I think the video is very clear that Jacob never uh, posed the imminent harm to anyone. In the video, you hear him saying, drop the knife. I think a couple people were saying that, but I didn't hear none of that. Um, that there was never a knife extended. He never raised a knife. He never unfolded a knife. There was no point in the video that is articulable for an officer to say that he was under harm at a particular point. So I think, um, you know, I think that's completely bogus. And I think that is just a rationalization to try to show what is really essentially an intentional act. Blake turns away from the officers and walks around the front of the vehicle towards the driver's side door. What are you thinking at that point? I had picked my knife up. I'm like, I'm not really worried. I'm walking away from them, so it's not like they're going to shoot me. I shouldn't have picked it up. And for the first time, Wisconsin's attorney general has identified the police officer who shot Blake seven times in the back. Officer Rustin Shesky has been with the department for seven years. My agents, that's the Division of Criminal Investigation, uh, recovered a knife from the driver's side floorboard of Mr. Blake's vehicle. At that time, I wasn't thinking clearly. Attorneys for Blake's family say that shouldn't make a difference. Think for a second what other things these police officers could have done instead of firing at least seven bullets. You, you said that we can just look at the video, and the video tells everything. There are going to be a lot of people who look at the video and say, in the video, you're walking away from the police. So why didn't he just stop and do what the police are asking him to do? In newly released police video. Stop the vehicle. Central Florida stop deputies vehicle. shout commands to a teenage driver last Friday who appears to stop the car. And then this. Stop the vehicle. Stop. Stop. Shocked residents protesting on Wednesday as the sheriff's office says deputies were acting in self-defense, giving repeated verbal commands, seven to be exact, before the teenager accelerates the vehicle towards the deputy who was then forced to fire his service weapon. Authorities say a third occupant in the car who was unharmed confirmed hearing the verbal commands. I don't think that it's implausible to think that they were afraid of the police officer shooting them. We've seen when people do comply, they get shot. When they don't comply, they get shot. Island protests erupting in Philadelphia hours after police shot and killed a black man. When police arrived, they say they found a man later identified as 27-year-old Walter Wallace who was holding a knife. And he was brandishing it and uh, waving it erratically. Video capturing the chaotic scene. NBC News cannot verify what occurred before or after the events shown in the video. Police say after telling Wallace to drop the knife... They opened fire, shooting Wallace multiple times before taking him to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The threat that caused the officers to discharge was towards the officers themselves. As far as uh, the, the totality of what was happening out here, we're still early in the investigation. Saved the life of a black girl who was about to be stabbed. No, don't, don't take my word for it, or law enforcement's body cam footage shows us exactly what happened. Among them is former Obama flunky Valerie Jarrett, who framed the Columbus incident like this, saying a black teenage girl named Makia Bryant was killed because a police officer immediately decided to shoot her multiple times in order to break up a knife fight. Demand accountability, fight for justice. Do they really think that cops should have just stood by? and let that poor girl possibly get stabbed to death, do nothing? According to radical activist Bree Newsom, that's exactly right. Teenagers have been having fights, including fights involving knives, for eons. That is just deranged, but not to the media. The Kia Bryant, a 16-year-old girl in Columbus, Ohio, called the police for help. An officer was on the scene, and in 22 seconds, he shot her dead. What if it were a member of your family, your neighbor, uh, in a... Is essentially a, a teenage fight, a schoolyard. Police will not exercise discretion, will not use a reduced sense of engagement to preserve black life. Now, just as pathological was attorney Ben Crump's tweet from the night before. Of course, it's just a complete lie, but one that was uncritically echoed 
by the New York slimes. They only corrected the egregious falsehood after getting caught. But by then, the White House had already committed to the media uh, its own version of the big lie. The killing of 16-year-old Michaela Bryant by the Columbus police is tragic. She was a child. We know that police violence disproportionately impacts uh, black and Latino people. But Michael Byrd executed an enemy of the Biden administration, so they're praising him. In fact, it turns out, and this may be surprising for you to learn, Michael Byrd is the real victim here. Could you give us the nature of some of those threats? They talked about, you know, killing me, uh, cutting off my head, um, you know, very vicious and cruel things. Racist it, things? There were some racist attacks as well. It's all disheartening because I know I was doing my job. Given the nature of the threats that you describe, do you have any concern about showing your face and identifying yourself? Of course I do. Uh, that is a very vital point, and it's something that uh, is frightening. I believe I showed the uh, utmost courage on January 6th. I showed the utmost courage by executing an unarmed woman without warning her first. That's the utmost courage. If we live in a country where we let that pass, that's courage? No, that's not courage. I mean, we can argue about whether it was justified or not. Notice nobody is arguing. People are just praising him, including Republican members of Congress who should be ashamed of themselves. But if we call that courage, we've devalued the term. God bless y'all. Don't forget to hit that like button, share my videos. Also, don't forget to donate if you like Kevin's Corner. There are links in the bottom of this video. Check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like the products, put Kevin in the promo code. You'll get a 20% discount. And um, what else? Oh, find me on Rumble in the Jungle. All right, God bless you all next time in Kevin's Corner. Take care.